terms of the rule of law, those who stand up for justice, the legal fraternity, the lawyers to man. Shakespeare's tradition has endured in bar rooms across Pakistan, and perhaps most so in this, the Lahore High Court bar. You, you at your best, have provided the first and foremost resistance to authoritarianism, to authoritarian rule from Ayub to Zia, from Yahya to Musharraf. When channeled into righteous anger, there is hardly a more powerful force for good than the members of this bar acting in concert and out of principle. Our country, alas, has often fallen prey to the conspiracies of coup makers and those who seek to undermine our constitutional rights, which is why I am here. We, the politicians, members of civil society, activists and common citizens need you, the lawyers, the people who make us fear the most to remain at the vanguard of our case for democracy, constitutional and human rights in Pakistan. But I, I must also add a caveat that when the lawyers and the bar associations choose to side with the coup makers or the violent elements, they incrementally add to the forces of darkness. You must never let that happen. The legal profession is a noble profession. It was, it was a profession of the founder of our nation, Barrister Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the Qaeda Azad, Owing to, his, owing to his early demise, he was unable to give us a full and proper constitution for our country. This was done by yet another barrister, Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Twenty-six, 26 years, 26 years after the country had been founded. For these entire 26 years, the state had no legitimate constitution. A final and permanent constitution finally came into force on August 14, 1973, which is referred to as the 1973 constitution. It was parliamentary democratic in a federal constitution. It provided for a system in which, in where, in which there was a trichotomy of powers between the legislature the executive and the judiciary. However, the parliament was supreme. It was the only institution that could pass laws, levy taxes, or amend the constitution. The judiciary remained independent and sworn to uphold, defend, and protect the constitution as amended from time to time, if at all, by the parliament of Pakistan. The executive remained subordinate to the prime minister and the cabinet elected the elected by the parliament. But before the nation could benefit from the full fruits of the unanimously adopted constitution, as a democracy, full authority and the freedom to vote was given to all adult citizens, irrespective of caste, creed, or religion. Sovereignty was in effect vested with the people. The four provinces, Punjab, Sindh, NWFP, which is now Bukhtunkhwa, Balochistan, enjoyed considerable autonomy and had their own governments on the pattern of the federal government. The constitution awaited the results of the UN-sponsored plebiscite to include Kashmir as the fifth province of Pakistan, a vibrant, progressive, popular, and people-serving government was in place when on July 5, 1977, General Zia ul Haq arbitrated the constitution under the euphemism held in abeyance, abolished parliament, dismissed the CJP, and sacked all the judges who were not prepared to take an oath contrary to the one they had already been bound by. The popularly elected prime minister, Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, was hanged after a so-called judicial process which no one accepts as just 
proper or in accordance with law. But to suppress the outraged public, the military dictator imprisoned thousands of political workers, flogged and tortured the public, and also hanged quite a few of them after summarily pretending to try them before court martials. In the meantime, those judges who had willingly taken the oath to be loyal to the military dictator validated the coup in the case of Begum Nusrat Bhutto in 1977. Generals from Zia to Musharraf have mutilated the constitution and distorted the social fabric of Pakistan. Contrived and absolute majorities were given to certain political parties as a consequence of perverted elections held by military rulers and their successors. The Pakistan People's Party was rigged out of elections, but it still managed to form coalition governments three times, even though the dice was heavily stacked against us. It was, in fact, obliged to hold hands, to join hands with other political part parties to form government when it otherwise ought to have had a majority had the elections not been interfered with, as we, have be, have we, as we now know beyond a reasonable doubt after the decision in the Askar Khan case. The design was to keep the Pakistan People's Party from forming government. And if the Pakistan People's Party government was inevitable, then it was to be a weak government, a handicapped government. It was to govern with its hands tied behind its back. It was to be in, it was to be in office, but not to be in power. And come what may, the people of Pakistan were not to decide their future. This has unfortunately remained a continuous pattern I can catalog historically a number of instances in which our opponents were facilitated not only by the core establishment, but also unfortunately by the judicial branch. Many misdemeanors of our opponents were overlooked even as they committed a grievous act of subverting the loyalty of judges of the superior courts. On our part, we remained on the wrong end of the stick with both Shaheed Mothrama Benazir Bhutto, twice the Prime Minister of Pakistan, and President Sardari spending long terms in jail without trial or conviction. As Chairman of the Pakistan People's Party, I have a few specific observations and suggestions to submit with humility and respect before the bar and the bench of Pakistan. The first hits closer to home. As we all know, the Lahore High Court forms part of the crime scene in Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's judicial murder. The Lahore High Court and other courts in Pakistan are where Shaheed Mothirma Benazir Bhutto and President Sardari were dragged in fake, false, and fabricated cases. We, mit we, witness, we witness the murder of justice where convictions were dictated to judges over phone calls, and unfortunately today, we still wait. We wait for justice for Shaheed Mothrama Benazir Bhutto in her assassination case. We wait for justice for Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto in the presidential reference file before the superior judiciary. And therefore, I request the members of the bar, the members of the judiciary, join us in our pursuit for justice. Join us in our pursuit for justice. The Pakistani people have waited far too long for justice in Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's case. And now the Pakistani people have waited far too long for justice in Shaheed Mothrama Benazir Bhutto's case. How can we, how can the average Pakistani, how can the average Pakistani, how can the average Pakistani expect justice? if Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and Shaheed Mothrama Benazi Bhutto were not given justice. Second, I'd like to add that in recent years, Pakistani jurisprudence has been driven and shaped largely by the Suomoto, ex Suomoto exercise of powers by the Honorable Supreme Court under Article 184.3 of the Constitution. This is largely seen as discretionary, often arbitrary jurisdiction mostly depend, depending on the mindset 
of va uh, and values of the Honorable Chief Justices of the time. Thus, we see that during the ten years of Chief Justice Iftikhar Muhammad Chaudhry and Chief Justice Saqib Nisar, it became a sharp-edged sword cutting across established rules and even laws. In other eras, like that of Chief Justice Nasrul Mulk and Asif Saeed Khosa, Article 184.3 almost became completely dormant. I therefore suggest that consideration may be given to provide at least one appeal against Suomoto or, or any other order or judgment under Article 184.3. It could be provided that initially the matter raised would be heard by a bench of three honorable judges, while an intra-court appeal would lie to a larger bench of five or more honorable justices. Third, my party is opposed to the, uh, my party are opposed in principle to clauses 62 and 63 of the Constitution, to clauses of Sadiq and Ami, not because we don't believe that members of parliament should be either. We do believe that members of the highest authority in government should be both Sadiq and Amin. But the issue with us is not that. The problem that we encounter is that as a matter of fact, the findings is largely based upon discretion and leads often to conflicting judgments. This is so because the term Sadiq and Amin are impre imprecise and vague. The same facts already seem to have led to different learned benches, to different learned conclusions. Uncertainty in the application of the law is thus weakness in the law, which is why we call for reform. Four, I suggest that more lady judges ought to be inducted in the superior judiciary. In 1994, in 1994, Shaheed Motorma Benazir Bhutto elevated as many as five female lawyers to the high courts, including Madam Justice Fakhrun Nisa Kokar and Nasra Iqbal as Lahore High Court judges, Khalida Rashid Khan as Peshawar High Court justice, and Majida Rizvi as a judge of the Sindh High Court. Unfortunately, None became chief justices or were elevated to the superior courts for what may be taken as gender bias. Only in 2018, Sayyidat Tahira Safdar became the first female CJ of the Balochistan High Court. Commendable, but not change enough. Only six lady justices in the superior judiciary as opposed to 141 male judges. Compared to other countries, we lag far behind. It is high time we caught up with the rest of the world. We certainly don't believe that the women of Pakistan deserve anything less. Access to justice is a fundamental principle of rule of law. It ensures that marginalized segments of society have their voices heard. One of the main hurdles faced by low-income litigants is the cost of legal proceedings. To counter this obstacle, implementations of more substantial, robust, and accessible legal aid programs are necessary. Six, Victims of sexual abuse are continually denied access to justice despite uh, legislative protections. One of the deterrents in this is the Thana culture. Even if the victim surpasses social stigma attached to reporting such crimes, the process of reporting in itself will discourage them from doing so. For implementations of roles in place for the protection of said victims, Reforms at the grassroots level structures are a must. And seven, the right to unionize. We believe in the right to unionize to all sections of society. But the most important of them are the rights for our students to unionize. 
are the rights for us students to have student unions. The Pakistan People's Party would not exist. The 1973 Constitution would not exist. A democratic Pakistan, a pluralistic Pakistan would not exist. The politics of the left would not exist. The politics of equality and justice would not exist if the student unions did not exist in Pakistan. And it falls upon us, it falls upon us politicians, it falls upon the members of the bar and the judiciary to ensure that these draconian measures that hold our future generation back are struck aside and struck aside at once. The students of Pakistan have a first right to be heard at their educational institutions that exist and solely exist for them. And then, of course, they have a right to be heard at every forum in Pakistan, from the local government to the National Assembly, from the National Assembly to the bars to the judiciary. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in Naya Pakistan, we are facing new authoritarianism, new forms of fascism, a south sunnah freedom, an erosion of our democratic rights, compromises on our human rights, and the death of our people's economic rights. Just as Zia could not have been resisted without the bar, just as Musharraf could not have been challenged without the bar, just the same way, Naya Pakistan's Naya dictatorship will not fall without the active role of the democratic members of the bars across this country. We need you. Let's work together. Let's free the people of Pakistan. Let's return to them their rights that they are due in accordance with their constitution and the norms of international justice. Aap sabka bohat bohat shukriya. It has been an absolute pleasure to address the esteemed members of the Lahore High Court. Shukriya. Thank you.